Welcome to 12 poses versus osteoporosis. Osteoporosis comes about when there's an imbalance between the forces creating bone and those reabsorbing it. After age 35 or so, you actually absorb bone more quickly than you make it. The medicines work by decreasing that process of reabsorption, but that has its dangers because some bone needs to be recycled. Yoga works the opposite way, stimulating the cells that make bones so it tilts the processes in favor of strengthening them. Here's a pilot study that makes the point. We tested these people's bone mineral density and taught some of them yoga, which they did for two years. The others, the controls, were similar in every way but did no yoga. After two years, we tested everyone's bones again. The tall positive columns indicate how much the yogi's bones strengthened. The small negative boxes indicate that the control group actually lost some bone mineral density over that time period. So yoga works very well. Take care when doing the yoga. Overzealousness is the chief cause of yoga injury. You don't want to fall and break a bone in the course of doing something intended to prevent fractures. Also, bend forward carefully. Don't collapse your back forward. This is how vertebral fractures occur. Bend from the hips, not the waist. In the video, you'll see more than one version of each of the poses. The easiest version is for osteoporosis in people that have little experience. There's also an intermediate version most of the time, which is for people who have osteopenia or that level of skill. In the center is the classical pose, which is the one we'll be describing in the video. If you want to know more about anything we're doing, go to sciatica.org or get a hold of Ellen Saltonstall's in my book, Yoga for Osteoporosis, which W.W. Norton will be putting out in April of 2009. The poses will be 30 seconds on each side. There's so much to say about each of the poses that we have to say some of it on the right and some of it on the left, but all of it applies to each side of the pose. Don't be discouraged if, it, if it's hard at first. You'll pretty soon be able to put everything together on each side of the pose and you will learn how to do them and get the benefits which are far more than just for your bones and they are cumulative. A guru once said, medicines, at first they're like heaven, but after a while they're like poison. Yoga may be like poison at first, but after a while it's like heaven. If you don't want to see this introduction in the future, just start on chapter two. In the meantime, our bones are waiting. Let's get started. Vrikshasana. Squeeze your quads as you stretch your legs up from your arches to your pelvis. Raise your left foot. Open the left knee to the side without turning your pelvis. Focus on something straight ahead. Inhale and raise your arms up to the sides as far as you can toward vertical. Pull your shoulders back. Exhale and lower your arms. Pull your upper thighs back. Lengthen and lower your pelvis and lift your abdomen. Center your pelvis over your thighs. Intensely stretch from the core of your pelvis out in all directions, out through your arms, down through your legs, and up through your torso. Embody the strength and dignity of a great tall tree. Bring the right foot down and rest on two feet. Trikonasana. With feet a yard apart, turn the right foot 90 degrees to the right, but not your torso. Rotate the left foot 30 degrees to the right with left arch and right heel in line. Inhale and stretch your arms horizontally, pulling your shoulder blades toward the spine. Exhale and incline your torso to the right without bending or twisting it. Keep the forward kneecap up and facing toward the toes. Lengthen the spine. Inhale as you come back up. Shift your hips to the left. Touch the floor outside your right foot. Your torso is in the plane defined by the intersection of your legs. The lower groin widens, the upper groin gets longer. Distribute your weight equally on both feet. 
Your lower eye gazes at your extended thumb. Inhale as you come back up. Virabhadrasana 2. Feet five feet apart. Stretch your arms at shoulder height, palms down, shoulders back. Turn the right leg out 90 degrees, but don't turn the torso. Turn the left foot in 30 degrees, aligning the right heel with the left arch. Bend your right knee to 90 degrees, stretching the left hamstrings. Your thigh, torso, and foot should be in the same plane. Move the tailbone down and lift your abdomen. Bring your pelvis level with the floor. Look to the bent knee side and gaze at your fingertips. Head, neck, and spine should be aligned over your pelvis. Extend out in all directions from the center of your pelvis. Parsva Konasana. Turn the right leg out 90 degrees, but don't turn the torso. Turn the left foot in 30 degrees, aligning the right heel with the left arch. Bend your right knee to 90 degrees. Incline your torso to the right and place your right hand on the floor to the outside of your right ankle. Extend your upper arm over your ear, palm facing down. Bring the arm into the same diagonal line as the rest of the body. Stretch the left leg straight out. Tighten your flanks. Focus on stretching your entire body, even your skin. From the pelvis at the center of the pose, stretch in all directions. Upward, but not forward. Do not strain your neck. Inhale as you come back up. Parvrita Trikonasana. Stand facing a wall about a foot from it, your feet three feet or so apart. Exhale. Twist your right hip forward and your left back. Swing your right arm above you to clear the wall. Place your right hand outside of your left foot or inside it or on a block. Twist the hip of your forward leg back toward the wall. Reach the pelvic bones back and the spine forward, lengthening the spine to enable it to twist. Inhale, stretch up along the spine. Elongate both sides of your chest away from your pelvis. Move your lower chest, not just the shoulder, toward the plane of your legs and draw your upper chest back toward the wall, close to the same plane. You may turn your head upward, but do not strain. Salabhasana, Locust Pose. Lie prone, arms at your sides. Elongate your body head to toe. Stretch the arms back. Slowly, carefully, raise first your shoulders, then your trunk, and head and neck off the mat. Point your toes and lift your legs. Share the arching between lumbar, thoracic, and cervical vertebrae. Let your back muscles do more work than your neck. Stretch your fingertips off the floor, back toward your heels. The upper back should arch more than the lumbar region. Come down the same way, abdomen first, then chest, then head and neck. Set to Bandhasana. Lie on your back, bend your knees, feet on the floor, hip width apart. Exhale and pull your arms into the shoulder sockets. Lift your hips and chest as you inhale. Tuck your shoulders under you. 
Interlace your fingers behind you and press the upper arms down into the floor to propel your torso upward. Lengthen the buttocks away from your waist without squeezing them tightly. Stretch the sides and center of the body down from your throat out through the legs. Exhale softly as you come down. Supta Padangustasana. Grasp your foot or loop a belt around it and raise your right leg up. Hold one end of the belt with each hand. Gradually straighten the leg, yet continue to press the left leg down into the floor. Tighten your left knee, pressing the thigh down. Firm your leg muscles. Also press the sitting bones down, which will slightly arch your lower back. Adjust the angle of the lifted leg so you can straighten the knee. Walk up the belt to straighten your elbows. Apply more pressure by drawing your shoulders down, back, and together. Breathe quietly. Supta Padangustasana 2. Firm the muscles of your legs, pressing the thighs down. Also press the sitting bones down, which will slightly arch your lower back. Abduct your right leg out to the side and hook a belt or two fingers around the foot. Hold both ends of the belt with the right hand. If you cannot straighten the abducted leg's knee, or if it is not yet at 90 degrees, bend the other leg pressing the foot flat on the floor until your hamstrings become more flexible. Gradually straighten the leg, firming the muscles on all sides of it, stretching the heel and toes forward. Continue to press the other leg down into the floor. Adjust the angle of the lifted leg so you can straighten your knee. The main action is to push the thigh away from your other leg, not toward your head. Marishyasana 3. Tip your pelvis forward toward your extended legs. Bend your right knee, heel close to the hip. Anchor the left leg firmly down, stretching fully through the sole of the foot. On your next inhalation, turn toward the right. Reach your left upper arm outside your right knee. Stretch the arm straight. Turn your right arm inward to reach around to your left hand and clasp one with the other or use a belt to extend your reach. Press your hands down to lift your spine. Especially stretch the big toe side of the foot forward. Raise your ribs with inhalation. Twist more as you exhale. Move the right lower ribs to the left. With each inhalation, lift up and roll your left shoulder back. With each exhalation, twist to the left. Matsyandrasana. Bend the right knee and place the right foot on the floor to the outside of your left leg. Bend your left knee and bring the foot outside your right hip. As you exhale, turn toward the right. Cross your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Wrap your left hand down, then back, and wrap your arm around your right bent leg. Reach the other hand around your back waist and clasp your hands. Your right shin is vertical, the left hand on the right knee. As you inhale, lift your spine up and root down through the pelvic bones. Pull your shoulders back any amount possible. Look over your right shoulder. Lengthen your spine, but keep your shoulders down and horizontal.
When you are finished, it is important to rest for a few minutes in Shavasana, the corpse pose. Lie on your back with your arms at your sides, about 12 inches from your body, palms up. Make sure the space is quiet and safe from distractions. Fold a blanket to support a slight arch of your thoracic spine, another one rolled for under your knees, and a third one folded to support your neck and head. An eye cover may help to relax your face and retreat from all outer stimuli. Make sure that the chest supporting blanket allows your shoulders to be flat on the floor. Refold or adjust as necessary. Adjust your hips by turning your legs inward to widen the back of the pelvis. Then let the thighs roll apart as you relax. Lengthen your buttocks away from the waist if you feel any compression in the lower back. Tuck your shoulder blades gently in toward the spine to open the front of your chest. Make sure that your neck is long and your chin and forehead are level. Then guide your attention through your whole body systematically from head to toe and back again, letting each part relax thoroughly. Mr. Iyengar comments, By remaining motionless for some time and keeping the mind still while you are fully conscious, you learn to relax. This conscious relaxation invigorates and refreshes both body and mind, but it is much harder to keep the mind than the body still. Therefore, this apparently easy posture is one of the most difficult to master. Do not fret if your mind produces thoughts. Just watch them unemotionally without being drawn into the content. Be a compassionate witness. You might notice yourself reviewing an event, thinking of a person, or making a plan. Try not to follow the pull of the thoughts, but passively observe them come and go. Trust in the process of letting go. After a few minutes of quiet rest, or five or ten minutes if you have time, take a few deeper breaths, stretch your arms and legs gently, bend your knees, and softly roll to the side. Take your time getting up and reflect on whatever effects, changes, and benefits you may feel from your yoga practice. At this point, you may be able to affirm your process of growth and healing.